What's up everybody, it's Darwin back with another video. Today we are actually taking the Chevy Bolt EV all the way up to NorCal. Long Beach to Central um, California, around like Stockton area. So that's where we're gonna go. We made sure there was uh, adequate tire pressure. So manufacturer specs, 38 uh, PSI. And we're gonna go ahead and do this trip. Now it's been a while since doing this trip without a Tesla. So I got rid of the Tesla because of the insane car prices, but we're gonna go ahead and do this trip without autopilot. And I'll let you guys know how I feel uh, without having any driver assistance aids. So right now the, the range is actually showing 210 miles. We charge it up to 100% against manufacturer recommendations because of the whole recall thing, but it's fine. Um, so we it's showing a max range of 268 miles, which would be more than what my Tesla Model 3 got. I'm pretty sure we're not gonna get there. We'll probably be right around 220. So we'll see how the range goes. We'll take it at about 65 to 70 miles an hour just to maximize range, and we'll see how it goes. Let's, I'm, I'm pretty confident that this car can be a reliable road tripper. It just takes some planning. So let's just see how it goes. So the best part about driving the Bolt is that having the hatchback means the cat can actually go poop in the litter box. Because last time we did this trip, the cat actually pooped on me because there was nowhere for the cat to go. So I thought the cat was just gonna cuddle up and sit on me, but instead it was just pooping on me. So this is the great thing about having a bolt. This was, this was an unexpected convenience right here. Having the cat access the litter box by having the hatchback. All right, we are pulling in to charge. We actually have enough range to get to the next stop, but uh, we needed to use the restroom, so might as well stop for a little bit, use the restroom. And this is my first time at an EA charger, so let's see how it works. Turn the car off, let's see how this works. So it says to plug in first. Go ahead and grab that. CCS plug. All right, here we go. Oh, this is a hefty cable. Oh, I think I need two hands to do this. Try. All right, we're plugged in. So I needed to stop the video uh, because I needed to tap my phone and use Apple Pay to pay for it or to initiate the charge. But it was a really easy process. I plugged in, I initiated the charge. Hopefully this works. I've heard some things about EA stations. It says initiating charging. So is it gonna go? Is it going? I don't know. Is it going? It is going. It is going, it's going. That was easy. I didn't have any issues with that. Plugged in, tap to pay, we're on our way. We're gonna just use the restroom real quick and then we'll probably do some calculations to see which charger we should hit next. All right, so just use the restroom right here. We're at the Lost Hills Electrify America charger. Uh, the great thing about this location is plenty of food. We never get to stop here uh, when we're in the Tesla because there is absolutely no Tesla superchargers. So, way more food options here. We got Taco Bell, Wendy's, we got Jack in the Box, we got McDonald's down the street, Carl's Jr. Everything is here. So, uh, we got three more stations over there. One, two, three. And then we got uh, this station right here that we're using. So, four stations total. You know what I like about the EA station is that it's going to show exactly what the percentage is in case someone left their car here um, and all the chargers are full. You'd be able to see what the percentage is so that you know how long you're gonna wait if you're waiting for a charger. Now, taking a look at uh, Apple CarPlay, this is actually pretty cool. We can just navigate to, let's say, Harris Ranch is our destination. We click it and we go. So it's gonna tell us exactly what the route is, right? That's like all normal stuff. Um, but something that I noticed is that you can actually search along your route and take a look at the charging stations. And it's actually giving you some good options. So it's giving you Tesla Supercharger, Electrify America. It would be really cool if it lets you filter, um, filter out the stations that you wanna hit. Like for example, we wanna hit Electrify America stations because we have a pass um, that gives us a cheaper rate. But for example, I can go ahead and add, say this one right here. The, farther, the stations that are farther away are farther down. So we can hit this one and boom, it's gonna populate that and take us straight to that charge station that's on route. That's a pretty cool feature because I feel like that's something that was missing from the regular uh, infotainment apps that uh, you know direct you to your destination through the right chargers. And this one gives you that option. 
Again, this is not your best road trip car, but it's doable, it's doable. Still waiting for my wife to come out of the restroom. So during this time, restroom breaks, you might as well get a little bit of juice and uh, see where it takes you. We, we uh, got here with like 75 miles, I think. So now we're at like 93. Uh, when she gets back, we'll probably have enough to get to um, like a fireball station maybe. So we'll probably head there and uh, charge up there while we eat lunch. So that's a good opportunity to just like fully charge up. But it's good to get out, stretch your legs. We've been driving for like three hours. You guys might be saying like 160 miles, how is that three hours? Well, we have to drive through the heart of LA, right? So like commuter traffic and all that stuff. All right, so we are at 107 miles left. It's gonna take us about 91 miles to get to our next stop where we're gonna have lunch. And we're gonna go ahead and unplug now. Go ahead and hit stop. We hit stop. Please unplug. No plugging. Get back. Here we go. Cool. So we were here for 13 minutes. Enough to use the restroom, eat a little snack in the car, but we'll eat lunch at our next stop. So it's time to head out. 108 predicted miles to travel 91 miles. We should be there, no problem. All right, so we're getting a little bit of range anxiety. On the meter, it shows 28 miles of range left. Worst case scenario, 22 miles. On our Apple Maps, it says we got 21 miles to go to get to that Fireball Electrify America's charging station. We're doing 65, going with traffic. I don't think there's anything to worry about, but it's interesting how the meter turns orange. I wonder if it'll turn red. I'm pretty sure it will, but that turned orange when there was about, I think 20% left or thereabout. So yeah, now 27 miles with 20 miles to go. I don't think we have an issue. We'll plug in, hopefully we get that full 50 kilowatt charge rate while we eat lunch and then we'll be, we'll be good to go. All right, this is, this is getting real now. Right now the car is not even showing any range at all. As you can see, it is blinking. All it says is low. It gave us a warning saying uh, propulsion power reduced we have 3.7 miles to go. I'm going like 60 miles an hour. I'm pretty sure we're gonna make it. If not, we have AAA. But, you know, just gotta just gotta do it. Look, behind me, there's a Tesla. It's going the same speed. It's probably just, look, look behind me. There's a Tesla going the same speed. Oh, now it's going around us. <laughs> but yeah, we, we gotta try to conserve the range just because we don't know how much range is left. We don't know how much battery's left. I really wish they would put a um, percentage meter like they do in almost every other EV, but no. It just says low, it just says charge soon. So we'll see how far we go. All right, so this is a quick update. We are parked here at the Fireball Station um, Electrify America chargers. We pulled in, didn't show a range on the range meter. It was a little bit stressful, but we, we pulled into the first spot and then that charger is just out of order. It's just on the screen, it says charger unavailable. Then we pulled into a second spot, started charging, but the charge rate is way lower than what it's supposed to be. Um, it shows 35 kilowatts when this car is capable of charging 50 to 55. So we unplugged, and by the way, that second time it, it worked immediately, but we unplugged, charged, tried a different charger to try to get a higher charging rate, and then that one didn't work at all. I think uh, I initiated the payment wrong or whatever, but like we plugged in, tapped the card, didn't work. Switch back over to that second charger, and now we are charging at a continuous 35 kilowatts. Um, walked across the street to get McDonald's, was right next to the Tesla charger, and that Tesla charger is packed. Like, they have 60 chargers. I'd say maybe 50 to 60 of them are full, and you have to actually look through the parking spaces to get into a charger. It's crazy packed with Teslas over there. But, um, yeah, so far, that's the most stressful part of the day, just, like, you know, driving it all the way down to basically zero, where it wasn't showing any range. But um, we made it. We're charging. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and enjoy our lunch. All right, so we have made it to a rest stop where there is this public charger here. It is free. It is putting out 41, 42 kilowatts, which is much more than Electrify America. It's a beautiful rest stop right here on the side of the highway. So we drove for about an hour and a half after lunch. We did have enough range to reach our destination, but we figured we'd just stop here, rest stop, get some battery just in case. Um, and just top it off so the car doesn't need to charge immediately when we get to our destination. And this is a pretty nice spot. I bet there are some stationary batteries over there that help the power. There's this uh, EV, EV Rap 4 right here, 
which does not have quick charge capabilities unless they have the chat ammo modification, but it doesn't look like they do. Hopefully they're not stranded. They do have the uh, charge port popped open back there. So hopefully they're okay. Tesla powertrain and all that. But yeah, this is a nice place. We'll just chill here for maybe 10, 15 minutes just to get a little, little bit of juice after our restroom break and we're headed out after that. All right, so we made it. We are plugged in 110 outlet at the in-laws house we made it to stockton california from long beach that was a long day um honestly the charging wasn't that bad we really only need to make a uh, one stop if we wanted to charge pretty full at that one stop but like the ea stations was only giving us like 33 kilowatts of charging power but um we made it not too bad of a trip i would say this car's downfall is that it has very very slow charging speeds on dc fast charging so i would say uh anything 150 or over would have been fine but this we never got past 45 um and that was at the public station not the ea station thankfully all the charging today was free ea was doing like a like a thanksgiving travel which was free and then the public station was free and it's free all the time all right so i guess this is a good time to talk about why i sold my tesla since i've never uh, made a video about that but the used car market is absolutely insane and like Tesla was cool. Like it was a it was a cool car. But if you're gonna give me more money than what I paid for the car after I drove sixteen thousand miles for it, I'm taking the money. Um, like I said in previous videos, the Tesla is not really a car that I'm like super excited or proud of to to get into every single time. It's just like an appliance, an A to B car, and a car that I'm truly excited for would be the Ionic Five EV6. The Kia is coming up. The Kia or Hyundai um ionic 5 or ev6 coming up uh super proud of those um super excited those those cars actually have some passion some soul um just like the, the tesla every time i got in that car i was like uh rattle or build quality or um i walk up to the car and you can see misaligned panels and i took it in the tesla and they wouldn't fix it these are the things that tesla owners never really talk about because i feel like it's just things that make them feel bad about the purchase it's like MSRP is like $60,000 car and you're getting a car where if you take it in for service, you're going to get Uber credits and not a loaner car. So, um, just not for me. Uh, I'll take the money, took that money, put it in the stocks and, uh, it's done very well. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Tesla model three for the good times, but, uh, it's time for you to go. And as for like, what car am I driving now? I actually got a Nissan Leaf. So stay tuned for the video on that. I actually bought a super cheap used Nissan Leaf. Um, some of you guys might be wondering, what about the Fiat that you had? I uh, sold the Fiat, sold the Tesla. I was actually only, the only car in the household for a while was this Bolt. And this Bolt was like serving all our needs, but then winter came around and I needed a car to get me, you know, just from A to B. So I got the Nissan Leaf and that's been an awesome vehicle for like $5,000. So anyways, just wanted to prove that you could take road trips in the Bolt, which we did today. Um, the charging was not as seamless as just plug and charge, but it was pretty good. Like the only problem that we had was that it was not getting up to 50 kilowatts, but it wasn't, it didn't feel like, oh, this is dragging on. Like, why are we waiting here? It never felt like that. We charged while we were eating breakfast. We charged during a restroom break. And then the only um, charging session that we went to where we were kind of waiting was just the last charging ses session at that park, at that wilderness park um, rest stop where we just wanted to charge because we didn't want to use, you know, so much electricity at the house that we're staying at. So just to be considerate and not like plugging it in and charging it for a whole two days, we decided to like top off the battery at least like 40% just to kind of maintain the battery health a little bit. Um, and then, you know, not like charging a full battery up. Uh, so we didn't even need to stop at that last stop. We just did it just to do it. And for a car that costs 5,200 bucks over three years, less than four to $5 a day on a lease. And we don't have to worry about the car de battery degradation or anything like that. We just give the car back at the end of that, man, this, this unbelievable deal. So anyways, hopefully you guys change your mindset about cars, especially right now when it's like, you know, chip shortage, everyone's just like dying to get a car overextending themselves to get a car guys. At the end of the day, a car gets you from point A to point B. And um, I thought it would be a struggle to drive this car, you know, have to wait for charging. This, this is why I thought as a Tesla owner, oh man, you gotta wait for charging, charging infrastructure bad, you know, uh, there's no autopilot. But honestly, doing about 360 miles today, autopilot, it didn't really make a difference. Like we were stuck in traffic, um, it was stop and go, but the one pedal driving helped a lot. Um, the charging wasn't that bad. We had to stop and eat lunch anyway. And like, yeah, it's not the best, but you know, you're not paying four or five times more for 
the best, which is not four or five times better than this. So, um, hey, Chevy Bolt, if you can get a deal, like I've seen Chevy Bolts go for as little as thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars $14,000. They've probably all gone up now because now everybody who has a Chevy Bolt is going to get a brand new battery replacement. So, deal of a lifetime. If you can find a Chevy Bolt for like fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars $16,000, I would jump on that because you're going to get a brand new battery with a brand new warranty. That's the car to get. Um, actually, I'm very extremely happy with this car. All right, what's up, guys? So on the way back from our road trip, we are at Lost Hills, and we have uh, the Lost Hills Electrify America charging station, which only has four stations. Right now, we actually see a Rivian right here. Let's take a look at that. That's pretty cool. This guy actually works for Rivian. He's right there. ID4 charging, and then there's a Kona behind the Rivian. <laughs> the the Kona looks so small, you can't even see it behind the Rivian. And then there's an ID4 over here. So uh, this is the thing about Electrify America chargers. There's just two limited spots. But yeah, uh, so the main takeaway here is that people need to get educated about charging their electric cars because everybody here seems to want to charge it to 100%. And it's like, bro, this is, you. it's just going to take way too long if you're charging to 100%. Just get up to 80%. Once your kilowatt rate starts to slow down, you move on to the next charger. But everyone here, like that white one, there's a white one over here. There's a white ID4 way back there. And that guy's trying to charge to 100%. So he's already at 80. I, I thought he was going to take off. But now he's like sitting there. And he's like, oh yeah, it's going to be a while. I'm, I'm charged to 100%. Same thing with the Rivian. The Rivian wants to charge to 100%. So these people are just, you know, hogging up the, the, the fast chargers when they could just move on to the next charger. There's plenty of chargers to wherever they need to go, especially the Rivian, which has an uh, insane amount of range. So... Um, yeah, so, you know, I'm just gonna put this video out there just in case somebody who's watching does not know about kilowatt charge rates. Your electric car charges way slower at the top than it does from zero to like 50 or zero to 60. And if you can just make it to the next charger, that's the way to do it. So we're stuck here, um, mainly because people don't know anything about charging their cars, a bunch of electric car noobs, but you know, that's okay. It's part of, it's growing pains, right? So Electrify America probably needs to take up a whole row of charges here probably put at least 10 to 16 chargers because at the rate of EV adoption, they're gonna need it. All right, um, but aside from that, it's been smooth so far. We did about 220 miles from Stockton to Los Hills, or actually it's about 200 miles, but I'm pretty confident this car can do 220 miles nonstop to a charge. But um, the charging infrastructure is still lacking and education is still lacking among people charging. So that's that. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Now, this was not a comparison between Tesla road trips versus other EV road trips. I just wanted to show that road tripping with the Chevy Bolt is actually possible. Now, I did miss autopilot on some of the drive, but not as much as I thought I would, if that makes sense. On autopilot, you still gotta keep your hands on the wheel, so there's not that much difference when it comes to that. What I did love about the Bolt was that the steering ratio was great for highway driving, so the car really did hold its own and go straight and any little uh, input into the steering wheel did not make a huge difference. Now, the car was incredibly efficient, as you can see here. It basically did 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour, and yes, I am not driving super fast, but mainly because there was traffic, some of it because I was trying to conserve range, but 3.9 is better than any time that I've driven my Tesla on the same trip. In the mid threes is usually what I typically get. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that video, and subscribe if you guys like this content. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.